Okay, uh, this is the 28 solar panel that I, we do have right in here is made by the Sharp. These are 240 watt uh, solar panel. Each one is equipped with a macro inverter with the in phase 215 watt. The total rating on this system is a uh, 6700 watt. Uh, and they are producing up to the 5500 watt by one in the afternoon uh, I get some somewhere between 30 kilowatt till 40 kilowatt per day during the year and a half they are very nice system I never have any problem yet with it and this is the system is working perfectly while the grid is up when the grid goes down uh, we are going to have a solution for it how we can bring them up and using them while the sun is up Okay, uh, I changed my office to the, the lab during the last two months and uh, what is the objectivity of this video is we are making the dynamic dump load, dynamic AC dump load that we be able to turn on the macro inverter that we do have while the grid is down and uh, using the power that they put in God. As you know, all of the grid type macro inverter or inverter, they working while the uh, grid is up. But with the system that we're building right in here, uh, we are going to be able to, when the grid is going to go down during the daytime, you harvesting the power that the, the macro inverter putting up. To doing so, we run a bunch of the experiment right in here to, uh, I'm just going to explain from this side. I, these are the macro inverter that we do have in the top. We do have 28 of this in the top. We're going to add eventually four more to it. Each one of these uh, inverter, they are rated at 215 watt. That we are using the sharp solar panel. Each one of those solar panels are 240 watt. Uh, during the last year and a half, uh, as I was explaining before, I do have the days that the uh, system generate up to the 44 kilowatt per day. But mainly they are somewhere between 30 to 38, 39 kilowatt per day on the sunny day. So uh, I use three of this macro inverter right in here. One, two, three. I'm using three supply. One is going to be this battery and the two power supply as my um, solar panel. I connect them to the inside, uh, uh, the DC side of this macro inverter, and all of this macro inverter they connected via this bus line. Let me see if I can pull this bus line up right in here. They plug in one right there, one right in here. And the other end of it is connected to this inverter right in here. We are explaining to you guys why do we using this inverter and what is the feature of this inverter. You cannot use the regular inverter. Inverter should have certain characteristics to be used with this system. This power supply, they are capable of generating 30 volt 10 amp. So uh, I do have two of them and I have a battery right in here. This is 24 volt 7 amp using to the third. Uh, inverter right in here while they gen as you know it you guys already know this micro inverter is made by the in phase while they're generating the power they're blinking orange color right in here if they communicating with your uh, envoy uh, receiver then it's going to be green if they blinking red it means they are not generating the power the dc is too low or the ac is too high or low anyhow now let's just talk a little about our inverter right in here this inverter made by the Magnum. The feature of this inverter is a tight spec that it has. What am I mean with that? The frequency, first of all, is pure sine wave. It means a pure sine wave. It's 60 hertz. It has plus minus 0.1% tolerance on the uh, frequency. And the voltage range, I believe, is going to be somewhere between 215 till 254 volt. When I was talking about the difference between this inverter and any other inverter, I mentioned about the tight spec that it has. But beside that, this inverter has a feature that the regular sine wave inverter doesn't have it. And they call this inverter uh, AC couple. What's the difference between the AC couple inverter and regular inverter is this. On the regular inverter, you just apply the uh, DC supply to the input and it's generating the AC supply for you out. 
on this inverter that they call up AC couple, you can have at the same time AC in the output and it's bringing the current back to the DC side. So this is bi-directional. So when I do have a battery in the DC side, it can supply the power for me to the inverter. But if the voltage in the AC side if is higher than it's supposed to be, then the current is flowing back to the battery. So that is making it uh, different than the regular inverter. So I do have a two battery right in here for this. These are not going to be the real battery that I'm going to use on while, while this is going to be in a real life. This is just for the experiment I'm using. Each one of these battery, they are 12 volt, 30 amp, 35 amp. I put them in a series to generate 24 volt being fed right in here. I do have two quick disconnect right in here if I want to disconnect the uh, DC that is goes inside the inverter. On this side of it, I connect the output of all of this inverter that is going to be 240 volt right in here in this terminal in the side. At the same time, at the same place, I brought another cable to this dump load, the AC dump load that we made right in here. We're going to explain, this is going to be the main subject of this uh, video that we're making. I'm, I, 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 I'm assuming that you guys already know how to use, how, what is the macro inverter is about, what is the uh, great tie inverter is about. This dump load is the AC dump load is the highlight of this video and we're going to go through the details of how did we build this thing, why did we design them the way that it is and why we did not use the uh, DC dump load that 90% of the inverter out there right now that uh, if they're using the inverter to turning on the macro inverter or great tie inverter they are using the DC dump load to doing that they, some of the people they might use something like this made by the uh, m uh, morning star this uh, capable of the dumping up to the 60 amp but this is not going to be good enough the reason that's not good enough first of all all the power generated with a, a great tie inverter gotta go through inside this uh, inverter go through the contactor go through the electronics change to the dc and then it's been dumped this is going to put a lot of wear and tear in all of our electronics this inverter electronic instead of doing so we are using the same feature that this DC lump, uh, DC dump load is using it, monitoring the DC side voltage right in here and based on the voltage of the DC side we are going to say to the uh, dump load to come on and dumping the load before it gets inside the inverter. So from the 240 volt that the uh, inverter are generating we are going to start dumping them up elaborate a little more about why did I go to the route of the, the, use, the designing the AC dump load instead of the DC dump load. If I was going to go ahead and use a DC dump load, I probably going to use a piece of equipment like this that it made by the Morningstar and it's capable of dumping the load uh, about 60 amp. This is capable of dumping the load about 60 amp. Uh, this piece of equipment with a monitor that is in front of it, it costs about $300. So 24 volt times uh, 60 amp is going to be something around 1400 watt. For every 1400 watt, I have to spend two till $300. It just depends if I want to have a display in front of it or not. So in my case, I do need to buy four of these. So it cost me about $1,000 just for this piece of equipment and that is not going to be included of the, all of the uh, AC, DC uh, load that I need to buy and the cabling because cabling is going to be much thicker for the DC. You just imagine if you want to dump about, uh, let's just say about even 2,400 uh, watt of the uh, DC if you want to dump the load you need a cable that you can handle about 100 amp so if you do have twice at that amount you need a cable that you can handle 200 amp so the cabling and the piece of equipment and the load is going to be much more higher on the dc respect to the ac dump load that i designed right in here plus the wear and tear on the dc is going to be much more on the main inverter compared with the 
AC that I designed. Again, this question is going to come up. Why do we need to just keep them on? Why we don't shut them off? Uh, and the reason is, all this inverter, all the art of this inverter is they, they build them somehow. When you shut them off, it takes five minutes. It's checking your voltages and it's checking your frequency. It's checking the voltages to make sure it's around 240 volt and it's checking your frequency to make sure it's 60 hertz. If it's 60.6 or it's 59 hertz, it will not gonna come up. 